So this is almost in the general standard form, but not quite. So I have 4x squared. I need to move this negative 3y squared next, then negative 16x minus 18y minus 12 equals 0. Now I can easily see that a equals 4 and c equals negative 3. Since these have opposite signs, that means that this is an equation describing hyperbola. Okay, next task is to complete the square. I'm going to first add 12 to both sides to remove the constant from the left side. Then I'm going to group the x terms, which is 4x squared minus 16x. And then I have a negative 3y squared minus 18y, and that all equals 12. I have a leading coefficient that is something other than 1, so I'm going to factor out the 4, leaving behind x squared minus 4x. Here, I need to factor out a negative 3. That's going to leave behind y squared plus 6y. You need to be careful with the signs here. Just double checking, negative 3 times y squared is negative 3y squared. Negative 3 times positive 6y is negative 18y. When you factor out with that negative sign, equals 12. Completing the square, b squared over 4, in this case, is 4 squared divided by 4, is 16 divided by 4, that's 4. So I'm going to add 4 here. I'm also going to add 4 times 4, or 16, to the right to keep the equation balanced. For the y expression, I have y squared plus 6y, therefore b squared over 4 equals 6 squared divided by 4, which is 36, divided by 4, which is 9. Negative 3 times 9, negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. So I'm going to subtract 27 from the right side, again, keeping the equation balanced. Rewriting this as x minus 2 quantity squared, minus 3 times y plus 3 quantity squared equals 16 plus 12 is 28 minus 27. Conveniently, I end up with a 1 on the right. Now, this is almost in standard form. Generally, with standard form for hyperbola, we're going to have um, this term would be in the denominator. So it is possible to rewrite it like this, and it might be easier to look at it that way so that you can immediately know, okay, this is a squared, instead of having to think it out. So putting it in truly standard form is also a good idea. Because recall that if I have the numerator divided by 1 fourth, that's the same as this times 4. And that tells me that I have a hyperbola with a center at 2, negative 3. You've got to watch out for this positive sign. And it has a horizontal transverse axis. So today we learned how to, we learned exactly what conic sections are, where they, they come from, and how to look at an equation and determine what type of conic section that it describes. So thanks for visiting educator.com. See you again soon.